Welcome back to another video, and today I am here with this UFC 307 card that just got announced, and I want to talk about it, give my quick thoughts on each fight, but before we get into it, I just want to say, if you guys can like this video and please hit the subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me, and also push these videos out to other people to see my takes on these fights. And I want to first kind of start off with, you know, Kevin Holland versus Roman Delice. Uh This fight got added to the card for UFC 307 um I just want to say it's a very stacked card and you know with Kevin Holland um in this uh yeah in this UFC 307 card it's a good addition to have you know throughout the fight weeks throughout the interviews uh press conferences where I feel like that's the main thing um he is the best at outside of his fighting uh he brings that energy he talks a lot of shit uh, at the end of the day like I said someone who's good to have throughout fight week so I like that addition a lot uh, and, and the fight itself could either be really shit or really good. Um, I just think, you know, if Roman Delite stands on the feet, same with Kevin Holland, they both stand on the feet and just trade shots back and forth, that'll be a firefight to see. Uh, next one is Jose Aldo versus Mario Batista. Um, you know what? Hey, well-deserved fight for Mario Batista to go against the legend. He's on a six-fight winning streak. I believe Jose Aldo's ranked. And, you know, Mario Batista... Um, you know he's on a he's on a big fight when he's getting you know with Aldo if he wants to make his you know run back to the UFC this is a good test as well because someone who is coming up big uh, is also on a long winning streak uh, I like this matchup a lot just because of the stakes that are in this fight and yeah we'll we'll see what happens when when the fight comes up another fight that got added into the card I'm just you know if I keep looking to the right it's because I have to keep going back and forth on. Who all are on the card, but uh, for for this one, Aljamain Sterling, he will be going against Mazvar Evliov. He will be going against. Um, he is eighteen to zero. Uh, he's coming up in this you know featherweight division. Uh, I think Aljamain. I think for both of them, to be honest, is a good test. Uh, you know, if Aljo gets this win, this could really for sure put him into the title contention. And, you know, for Mavzar, um, this win also amplifies. I think, you know, if he gets this win, he can go for the belt, but I think they'll give it to Diego Lopez just because he might be the more exciting fighter, blah, blah, blah. You know how the UFC is being a business at the end of the day, uh, wanting the more entertaining fights before anything else. So, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's a business at the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think that's a good fight to have on this card. It, it has, you know, some stake on the line especially on a pay-per-view and you know another one that kind of had that's kind of interesting that they added to this card Steven Wonderboy Thompson he'll be going as Joaquin Buckley uh on on this one as well Wonderboy um you know he's a little he's obviously a bit older but still a great striker um you know of all time one of the great strikers of all time uh and so whenever whenever he's always in always returns into the ring very interested to see how he does with other com with other opponents and other fights, and especially with Walking Buckley in this one, where he provides a lot of power, uh, this could be a you know this is for sure a test for him. You know what I mean? Just because you know Wonder Boy's on the older side of things, Buckley who is you know still kind of young. Uh, he's I believe Walking Buckley I believe is about what how old is he? He's thirty years old. You know what I mean? While Wonder Boy's forty one, so he's still you know he's still kind of he's still kind of um, in his prime. I would say. Uh, wanting to make a statement in that weight division so yeah i mean you know walking buckley uh if if he does win this fight i think it's by knockout but um if it goes to the decision i'm gonna give it to wonder boy that's what i will say as an early prediction to this card uh, and then just a few more fights that got added on um caitlin vieira will be going against kayla harrison kayla harrison making return back to bantamweight after her big win against holly Holm. I'm surprised that they not give her the title shot against Raquel Pennington, where she has a lot of um, hype coming off of that win against um, Holly Holm. So interesting that they're going to give her another fight against uh, Kevin Vieira. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting Holly Holm. Oh, not Holly Holm. I apologize. I'm expecting Kayla Harrison to win the fight, um, nevertheless. And uh, I think for sure if she does win this fight, she will get a, a title shot against the winner of Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena, the co-main event of this card. It's interesting. I think, you know, 
pe- I, people I feel like are not the most happy with this co-main uh, fight just because Raquel Pennington, not the most appealing of a fighter. Juliana Pena, I respect for trying to be heel and having people not like her from that aspect, from a business standpoint and everything like that. But her as a fighter, uh, she's good. She's, she's still a good fighter. But this we could kind of see the skill um the skill guy between like her and like you know if we're gonna go with like the grades like you know man nunez and all that etc uh and so it could go this fight could be you know uh tolerable to watch to a lot of people in the eye or it could really get memed on and kind of shit on for the for being a co-main on this fight it just depends on it just depends how entertaining it is at the end of the day so yeah, I mean that one got added. It's it's a bantamweight fight. There's a belt on the line. I I can understand why it's a co-main at the end of the day. But to wrap it up, wrap it up here. Alex Pereira going against Khalil Roundtree, and I think this is where the most anger is, and it's because they're not giving Magomed Ankalaev the fight. Here's my theory on why they they are giving Khalil Roundtree the title shot over Magomed Ankalaev. Outside of the fact that they gave Rockic the title, sh- uh, the the fight, so it's Rockage versus Ankalaev. Um, they did that fight uh, just so I think they're trying to, in a way, I'm not saying protecting him, but they're picking the fights that are smart for Alex Pereira. Uh, obviously, if they put Ankalaev versus Pereira, there's that threat and risk of, you know, he could just take him down and mob him for five rounds, and the UFC does not like that, especially on a, on a pay-per-view card, where clearly round she's a striker, Pereira's a phenomenal striker we could see you know a very good fight or a highlight ko by Pereira is what they are expecting within this fight does Khalil Khalil Roundtree deserve the title shot not really I'm gonna be honest um but that's why I mean at the end of the day listen the UFC is a business Uh, I don't necessarily agree with um with you know the title shot to Khalil Roundtree I'm always you know in favor of what's fair at the end of the day doesn't matter how boring good whatever if you're if you're a good fighter at the end of the day uh, whoever is the best candidate to get the title should get it. And so everyone knows what, he, what they're doing with having Alex Pereira go against Khalil Roundtree. Uh, what more he could do. I'm just happy, you know, it's going to be an exciting fight. So, yeah, I'm I'm expecting, you know, per, another Pereira win, to be honest. Uh, and and I think what, and this is what another thing that, that they might do. I forgot to explain this. With Pereira, if they, once when Pereira does win against Khalil Roundtree, I think what they're going to have to do is have Pereira move the heavyweight and kind of dodge the Ankalaya fight, which it's going to, it's going to ruffle some feathers, especially with a lot of fans. And, you know, when they kind of look back in history being like, well, this guy ducked Magomed Ankalaya, who great wrestler and everything. And so, yeah, I think they're going to try pushing Pereira to heavyweight uh, probably after this fight. Wouldn't be surprised at all. I think if he does successfully defend this one, it'll be three title defenses. Um, if, if he does win against Khalil Roundtree, Jamal Hill, and then the Pro Prohaska number two. Yeah, third one. So it'll be the third title defense in a span of two, like a year. It's it, Pereira might be fighter of the year for 2024, man. He's been killing it. The fights that he's been taking on in, in this year is, um, and, and, and the time, I, sh- I should say the time frame for each fight is just nuts, man. Shout out Pereira. But yeah. So that's my thoughts on UFC 307 as a card overall. Anyways, man, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. The subscriber goal for the end of... Actually, the subscriber goal right now is 10,000 subscribers. So please hit the subscribe button. Anyways, see you guys on the next video. Peace.